Hey everybody, so Voxelblade just released today, and I'm gonna do a starter guide, because some of the stuff in the beginning of the game can be quite confusing. So let's get right into it. In the character customization menu, you can choose your race. They all have different buffs and can be used for different builds, so if you want to know which one's the best for you to use, then go ahead and watch the video we dropped on that. I did use Kitsune for my first build, which gives me a bit of speed and extra jump heights. When you start the game, you'll spawn in this inn, and you have to talk to this innkeeper who will spawn a sword, and also give you a quest to start off with. So some of you might be here because you want to know how to actually do this quest, it's quite confusing. So whenever you get certain quests, they will actually have a marker which shows up next to the quest icon. As you can see, it's right there. And that little arrow will point you in the direction that you need to go to. Before you do this quest though, I advise you guys go and get all the other quests that are in the starting area. If you just talk to the NPCs around the place, then you'll get all the quests. So a little tip that people don't know is that if you press M and then go to quests, you can see the descriptions of all the quests. So keep that in mind if you get lost or stuck. So let's go through them one by one. So this is the investigator, and he gives you a quest to go and kill a vampire. The quest just says kill somebody and doesn't give you any markers. But if you go around and talk to the NPCs in the town, you'll see that this green goblin guy says that his eyes are red and he also smells like blood, meaning that he's the vampire. You can't kill him with your sword, you have to press M and then go to your inventory. And you'll have this scroll which is able to kill any immortal beings. And you could use it on him, and he'll die. It does mess up your screen and there's a lot of flashing, so do keep that in mind. From that quest, you get a bit of gold and some XP. This next quest is the hardest one, but it has a marker. You have to deliver a letter all the way in the desert. And in that area, you actually die slowly unless you have certain gear. So I'd advise you guys to wait a long time until you've leveled up to do this quest. So this fellow over here has a quest for you to cure him from his Magerlings curse. And to do that, you need to kill three Magerlings. So you can find the Magerlings in the forest. They spawn randomly but aren't too hard to find. To kill them, you just need to block their beam every few seconds, and then go in to hit them. To block, you just hold down F when the enemy is about to attack you, and then use left click to attack them with your basic attack, and also press Q to use your weapon art, which is a skill. For starter players, the weapon art is a lunge, which does quite a lot of damage. You can also do a heavy attack by right clicking your mouse, but this is more situational and more useful against players. So for this quest, you need to kill three Majorlings, which isn't too hard. And the reward is nice, you get a gold ring, which is good for most builds. If you're wondering what the difference is between a mage and a warrior, or other types of classes in this game, I'll cover that in the weapon upgrade section. So the next quest is the one which says undravify yourself, and basically, they want you to upgrade your gear. You don't have to equip gear, you just have to upgrade it. Head over to the forge in the starting village, and then choose the item that you want to upgrade. I chose the gold ring. This will cost you 500 gold, but it might depend on the item that you want to upgrade. And you'll get 500 back and 55 XP. Upgrading your items can increase their stats, so it's pretty useful. The next quest is the first actual killing quest. You can find this guy at the Patch of Pumpkins, and he asks you to go and kill 10 bunnies. Now this quest is really easy, the bunnies basically don't fight back. One thing that's good about it though is that you might get gear from killing the bunnies. The bunnies drop armor which allows you to jump higher and also run faster. This is really good for new players as we're trying to run across the map and explore. Also, when you're fighting these enemies, you don't want to run at them head first, like I'm doing right now. You kind of want to run to the side of them and then attack them. This will make them miss their attack and you won't get stun locked infinitely. So the reward for this quest is just a bit of money and XP. I advise you guys to equip the items that you got by pressing M and then going to your inventory. Each item that drops from different mobs have different stats. So go and look at them individually and choose which one sounds best to you. Now that you've done all these filler quests, let's go and actually do the main quest. So you just want to follow the marker and it will take you to this little wizard hut. So once you're there, climb up the ladders and you'll eventually get to the top. Right at the top of the tower, you'll find an NPC who will give you the next part of the quest. He'll send you to the forest and you basically just need to follow the marker again. You'll have to go through the forest and eventually you'll find this little abandoned town and that is where the next part of the quest is. I'll show you guys how to get there in case the marker is a bit confusing, but it's not too hard to find and you'll need to know how to get here because this is the place where you actually upgrade your weapon. Speaking of upgrading your weapon, let me explain how that system works. So Voxel Blade's upgrade system works a lot different from most RPGs. In this little shrine over here, you'll be able to upgrade your weapon. And you can do that by spending SP, which you can get by leveling up. I think it's also possible to get SP by beating bosses. But as a new player, the easiest way to do it is to level up. You can upgrade three parts of your sword, your handles, your blades, and your weapon art. Each of these weapon parts have different stats. For example, the greatsword blade is way slower, 
than the dagger blade, but it does a lot more damage. For this quest though, all you need to do is just click where it says Forge Sword, and this NPC will come up to you, and they will talk to you and tell you about the world. I'm not really a huge lore guy when it comes to any games, but if that kind of thing interests you, then make sure that you click the option where she asks you if you want to know more about your mission. I don't think any of this other dialogue matters though. So once you click yes, you'll be sent to this cutscene, and it basically tells you where the powers come from and what you're doing on this world. So apparently the world was surrounded by an ever encroaching void, and the Blade Collective grant people with power, and you're the last person who they've decided to grant the power to for whatever reason. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why you were able to summon swords. It also talks about how the Collective was trying to fight the void at its source, which is something that we'll probably be able to do in the game. Okay, now that cutscene is done, you'll get a next part of this quest. It's pretty easy, they just give you a marker and you have to find Pip in their hideouts. On the way there, you'll come across this little mountainside, and that is a place where you don't need to actually go over it. You could just go around it, and I spent like a minute or two minutes just trying to go over it when there was no way to do that. And yeah, so you just don't want to make this mistake, go around it, and you'll be able to find the place where you need to go to. The night cycle in this game is kind of annoying, I don't really like it, it's just a bit too dim. But yeah, so long as you have the marker, you shouldn't get lost, and it's pretty easy to find this place. It's in this little house over here. Just turn left and go inside it, and inside this place there's a um, uh, NPC, Pip, who is the same person from before. And the final part of this quest is you have to become stronger. Now what that means is you have to reach level 10. If you decided to watch this entire video, you should be around level 10 because you've done all the quests. If you just need a little bit more XP, you just go around and kill wolves or kill the bunnies. But if you haven't done all the quests in the starting area, I recommend you do that because it's definitely the fastest way to level up. So once you're level 10, come back and talk to this NPC again, and they will send you to the next part of the story. You have to go to the Flora Fields and go and fight the Void Rift, which is probably going to be the topic of another video. To get there, you simply just follow the marker, it's not too hard. But I'd also recommend that before you do this, you upgrade your weapon and your armor. To upgrade your weapon again, you have to go back to the shrine and then you can choose the upgrades that you want. So the upgrades work in a path system, which means that the upgrade that you get in the next tier will depend on the base of the blade or handle that you chose. So if you want to get a katana, you obviously have to choose the sharp blade. There's a ton of different paths that you can go for, so make sure that you check the Trello before locking yourself in. For the Greatsword path, the tier 4 weapons are the Darksteel Mace, the Gilded Hammer, the Zweihander Blade, and the Scoundrel's Blade. For the Mage Blade, the tier 4 weapons are the Grand Magic Great Blade, the Great Mage Core, the Spellbinder Rapier, and the Curved Magic Blade. For Sharp Blade, the tier 4 weapons are the Bejeweled Blade and the Shadow Blade, the Serrated Blade, and the Bloodied Needle. And for the Dagger Blade, the tier 4s are Bestial Dagger Blade, King's Dagger Blade, Duelist's Needle, and Crude Blade. There are also a ton of other elemental paths, but to get those you need to unlock them in the game, which I'll be showing you guys how to do that later. The handles pretty much follow the same path, each blade will have their corresponding handle, and normally it's a good practice to get the same handle type as you did blade type. Okay, so that's the Voxel Blade starter guide. That's gonna be it from me for now. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comments, I'll be happy to answer. Other than that though, I hope you guys have a good day. Peace out.